so effy. I have started to notice more and more viburnums in gardens. What can you tell us about this beautiful plant? All right. So I found that viburnums are a valuable plant, both in the wild and in our landscapes. And they're, put, they're a very diverse group of plants. Next slide. So the family is a doxaceae. It's very diverse and found all over the world. 150 different species, fast growing either shrub or small tree grows best in acidic soil. Most like or prefer full or part sun, but there are a few that prefer shade. And uh, for berry production, you'll always get the flowers, but for berry production, you really need to have more than one for cross-pollination in order to have a big berry production. Um, most of them are deer resistant. There's only one that I ran across that wasn't. Next slide. And these are a few that are native to Northern Virginia. There are some others that are native to right outside of Northern Virginia or in Virginia, but these specifically are native to around us. The Southern Arrowwood, the Smooth Black Haw, Possum Haw, and Maple Leaf. They're all hardy, pest resistant, attractive to songbirds, bees, and small mammals and the blue azure butterfly. Next slide. And I'll go through the ones that are native to Northern Virginia first and then give you a list of ones that aren't native that do very well. So Southern arrowroot, it's deciduous. So it doesn't have the leaves during the winter. The leaves are very glossy. It grows six to 15 feet not flashy, prefers full sun, the blossoms do not have a scent, blue to black berries. It was used for many medicinal purposes in the past and they think the name arrowroot came from Indians using the stems to fashion their arrows. So it makes a good hedge even though it's not a flashy uh, plant. Next slide. Smooth black haw. This one's also called cranberry viburnum. It's multi-stemmed, but you can train it to be single stemmed so that it can be a small tree. It grow, if you prune it to be one stem, then it tends to grow a little taller. It's a large native, 12 to 15, 12 by 15 feet, so 15 feet tall and 12 feet wide. And it's this I thought was interesting anastomosing leaf veins, meaning that it branches out from the main vein in the leaf, but then those veins come back together before they reach the margins. It blooms in May to June. It isn't fragrant, but the berries can be eaten when they're ripe, and you can just snack on the berries because they are supposed to be very sweet, and you can make them into jam as well. And then I found this one fact that I thought was interesting, that this particular tree doesn't look all that stunning to me, but it was a big tree winner for the smooth black hawk. It's located in Albemarle, Virginia. And it also was the largest, is the largest in the country at 35 feet tall. Next slide. Possum haw, also called smooth wither rod or wild raisin bush. It's also multi-stemmed. And it, but it's a rounded bush. Grows five to 12 feet tall, pale pink berries that fade to black. It likes moist soil and is often found in bogs or on floodplains. In the fall, it turns a purplish red. This is the one that may suffer from deer browsing. It didn't talk about them being defoliated by the deer or anything, but the deer might snack on it. And next slide. And maple leaf called that because its leaf resembles the maple tree leaf. It's a small tree, only five by four feet and is found in the understory because it prefers shade. 
It does well in dry conditions, has small white flowers that bloom May to June, produces red berries that turn to black. And in the fall, it turns, its leaves turn red. And next slide. All right, so those were our local natives. And there is a viburnum cultivar or native for most planting situations as they are so varied. Remember, right place for the right plant or right viburnum. Characteristics can be, and these are just a list to show you how varied they can be. So they can grow from two to 30 feet. They can be sweet or unpleasant smelling their blossoms. Their flowers can be white to pink. The foliage either glossy or dull, leaves velvety or leather, leathery, and the berries yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, and black. Most of them are dense shrubs, but some can be loose and open trees. Moderate to fast growing at a rate of one to two feet a year. They make excellent hedges, screens, foundation shrubs, or specimen plants. They are mostly sun loving, but a few prefer shade. And then some common cultivars that um, we have the um, Berkwood viburnum. Its uh, main characteristic is that it's very fragrant. The cinnamon leaf viburnum is an evergreen growing 10 to 20 feet. The David vi viburnum likes fold apart sun and grows two to five feet. Henry's viburnum can be trained into a small tree. The Korean spice viburnum is very fragrant. So we have another fragrant one that's um, related to the other one. And leatherleaf viburnum is an evergreen and good for fast growing barrier. And I have one of those and I can attest to that. It has made a wonderful barrier if you have the room because it does get quite wide. And then the next list of cultivars on the next slide. Nanny berry, you can eat the berries right off the bush or make jam with them. And then this one's called snowball bush. The, the other one that was a similar name is not the same thing. It resembles a hydrangea bush, but it's a little taller and it resembles hydrangea because it forms round clusters of flowers. The tube flower viburnum has uh, bold long leaves instead of the leaves being broad. They're very long and they're evergreen and 10 to 16 feet. A wayfaring tree is leggy in growth and can be invasive in some areas. And it does well in drought. Okay, Bodnot uh, viburnum blooms on naked stems. I thought this one was interested in the fall and winter. So here we have a winter blooming one and has fragrant rose colored blossoms. Double file viburnum, um, let's see, blooms in April and it resembles the dogwood because the flowers are layered on the branches. And I believe that was all the cultivars that I had. And here are my references. So you can see it's quite a varied spectrum of plants. And will, if you find the right one, it is suited for many different planting situations. All right. Thank you, Effie. We do have a couple of questions. Um, Nancy has asked if all these natives are deciduous. And I believe that all the natives are deciduous. Great, thank you. Pat says, I've heard that some people may get a rash or some kind of reaction when pruning, as a, when pruning some of these plants. Is this something common? With the leatherleaf viburnum, it has a flaky bark. And when you're messing with the branches or cutting them, that the flakiness, when you inhale it or it gets on your skin, it can in some people cause irritation. So itching or um, coughing or difficult breathing while you're messing with it. But just having it in the yard doesn't affect you. You have to actually be up with the branches, trimming them. We have one of those and it affects my husband, but it doesn't affect me. So I get to be the one that trims it. 
It's so leather just... meat is the only one that I know of that causes that kind of an allergic reaction. So that's your special plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 